Hello again, welcome back to our course. Today we are going to discuss a vital topic which is neonatal renal failure. As we all know, the number of cases of renal failure in neonate is increasing, so we have to take this topic in consideration and study everything about it. Today we are going to discuss a brief introduction about the renal function in neonate. We are going to discuss as well evaluation of renal function causes of acute kidney injury, how to differentiate between renal damage and pre-renal damage, the management of AKI, acute kidney injury, and how to calculate GFR. Also, we are going to take some cases and we are going to discuss them. Okay, let's start, shall we? We are going before before we start talking about renal failure, we have to take some things in consideration. First of all, usually the physiology of renal failure in units does not differ from that in adults. By meaning that the physiological classes of renal failure in adults is similar to in units, which means that we're going to see pre-renal failure, renal failure, and post-renal failure or which we called obstructive renal failure. However, the causes that we are going to search are different. For example, if we are talking about an adult male, older, elderly patient, we are going to search for most probably prostate enlargement will be the cause for renal failure in adult patient. However, if we're talking about a neonate with renal failure, we would think about a total different etiology. Example, posterior urethral valve. Okay, so the physiological classes are the same, but the causes for this renal damage usually differ from neonate and adults. Okay, okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about urine production. We have an important question to ask. When does the neonate produce urine? Okay, a lot of people think that neonates produce urine in the first day of life. And this thought is wrong. Actually, fetus produce urine. Urine production starts at 10 to 12 weeks of gestation. Okay, so actually the fetus produce urine. However, the function of this urine is not to get rid of the toxins. We have the placenta to get rid of the toxin. The function of this urine is to form the amniotic fluid. As we all know, 90% of the amniotic fluid is actually this urine. Okay, what will happen is that the fetus is going to breathe in this. What will happen is that the fetus is going to breathe this urine or the amniotic fluid and this will help to nourish the lung and develop the lung. So, this means that if the fetus, for any reason, did not produce this urine, we will have two problems. The first problem is that the amniotic fluid is not going to be formed, okay? And this will reflect in the fetus that the lung is not going to be well nourished, the lung is not going to be developed okay so after delivery usually we're going to see a neonate with a plastic or hypoplastic lung okay also before even before um even before the delivery this is going to be reflected to the mother we're going to see oligohydramnus what is the term oligohydramnus means means that you're having a mother in her 28th gestational week but when you measure the amniotic fluid, you're going to see it as if it is in her 14th of gestational age. Okay, this usually happens because the fetus is not producing urine. Okay, that means it's very important to check the history because it might give us an indication that the baby is having a renal problem in the very early beginning, even before diagnosing the baby or evaluating the baby okay okay 
since we are evaluating the renal function, we have to know how to evaluate the renal function. Okay, and of course, when we talk about renal function, the first thing that comes into our mind is the theorem creatinine. Theorem creatinine in units, okay. Theorem creatinine in units, usually in the first day of life and the, in, even in the first few days of life, it does not reflect the renal function of the neonate. However, it reflects the renal function of the mater of the mother, the maternal renal function. So we cannot actually depend on the theorem creat alone and use it as a factor to evaluate this kidney function. Okay. Usually, it takes the the uh, it takes the neonate time to get rid of the creatinine of the maternal creatinine. It takes time, and this time depends on gestational age. The more the premature the baby, the more time the baby is going to need in order to get rid of this creatinine. So, creatinine alone cannot be used to identify or to evaluate the renal function. Okay. However, we have a rule: it's 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 never normal to see a rising serum creat after the fourth day of life. Okay. Usually. We can see a rise in the theorem creat in preterm babies, okay, uh, and it's totally normal in the first few days of life if we see a rise in theorem creat in the preterm babies, it's okay, it will take time until it settles down and reach a steady state, okay? Okay, second thing, blood urea nitrogen, okay, blood urea nitrogen is a, a very useful indicator for the renal function, uh, blood urea nitrogen, if the kidney is working well usually it can get rid of the of the uh, of the urea nitrogen products okay however there are a lot of factors that might contribute to increase the blood urea nitrogen so the kidney is working well however the blood urea nitrogen is high due to other factors like for example high protein intake if we are increasing our protein intake to this baby Usually, we are going to see a hot urea blood nitrogen. If the baby is in catabolic state also, this is going to contribute in high blood urea nitrogen. If we are giving the baby steroids, all these things uh, can contribute in increasing blood urea nitrogen. So, we cannot use it alone as a factor to evaluate renal function. Okay, um, We are going to talk uh, briefly about something in, in adults. We use bunk creatinine ratio to evaluate whether it's a pre-renal or post-renal or intrinsic uh, kidney damage. However, you cannot use this rule in units. Okay, as we said, the serum creat usually is, is not a factor. It actually reflects the maternal serum creatinine and the blood urea nitrogen. A lot of things contribute with it, so we cannot use this rule. We're going to discuss later. Uh, how to differentiate between pre-renal and intrinsic kidney injury, okay? Third, glomerular filtration rate. Uh, glomerular filtration rate is calculated, okay? We have an equation that we're going to discuss at the end of the lecture, and we're going to discuss how can we calculate glomerular filtration rate. However, right now I just want to say that this equation mainly depends on serum creatinine, so again, we cannot use glomerular filtration rate alone to evaluate kidney function, okay? Last thing, and the most important thing in unit, is actually the fluid hemostasis and electrolytes, okay? Usually, it plays an important role to evaluate the kidney function, okay? If we're having Measurement of the urine output is very important in units and electrolyte and electrolyte give us an indication of renal function. As if we have abnormal but electrolyte balance, especially potassium and sodium, this means that the kidney is not functioning properly. Also, the urine output is a very important factor. Okay, usually if we're having 
a renal problem in unit we're going to see a low sodium level high potassium level also if the urine output is if the urine output is low this is an indication that the kidney is not functioning well and that we're having a problem okay so we said four factors that can evaluate kidney function each one i said that it cannot be used alone to determine the renal function so what we're going to do is we are going to take all the four factors we are going to take them in consideration with the history of the baby and the clinical sign and symptoms okay those are going to be how we are going to evaluate kidney function in units okay As we see in this table, normal serum creatinine differs with age and differs with gestational age. The more premature the baby, the higher serum creatinine, okay, and the longer time the baby needs to get rid of this serum creatinine, okay. It's very important to check the normal value of serum creatinine before evaluating the baby since we're having a bit higher serum creatinine in neonate than in adults okay okay as we said before we have the three physiological classes of kidney injury which is pre-renal intrinsic and obstructive okay we're going to discuss each one alone and then we are going to say how to differentiate between them and how to manage each one of them. Okay, let's start. Okay, pre-renal kidney injury. To cut it short, pre-renal kidney injury means that the blood flow going to the kidney is not enough to be able to perform its function okay when we're talking about the blood flow the renal blood flow we have to understand that it depends on two factors the first factor is the blood pressure and the second factor is the vascular resistance so anything that is going to decrease the blood pressure is going to decrease renal blood flow However, vascular, renal vascular resistance is inversely proportional with the renal blood flow. So anything that will contribute in increasing renal vascular resistance will cause decrease in renal blood flow. Any decrease in renal blood flow will cause pre-renal kidney injury. Okay, so we are going now to discuss. This is the main idea. Now we are going to discuss the causes that might cause renal blood flow uh, reduction and pre-renal acute kidney injury first of all as we said reduced effective circulatory volume reduced effective circulatory volume is going to cause low blood pressure so it's going to cause decrease in renal blood flow which will end up with pre-renal kidney injury what are the causes that might cause reduction in effective circulatory volume first of all hemorrhage a lot of blood loss blood pressure is going to decrease we're going to suffer from dehydration okay second dehydration okay we're not giving the baby enough fluids in order to maintain a proper circulatory volume sepsis sepsis will cause surge space loss so the blood volume inside the vessel is going to decrease therefore is going to be treated as dehydration okay necrotizing enterocolitis it also can be under sepsis same idea okay congenital heart disease we're having a heart that is not functioning well so the circulatory volume will be affected the amount of blood going to the kidney is going to be reduced which will cause pre-renal kidney injury last thing hypoalbuminemia okay if the baby is hypoalbuminemic 
we are going to see that the blood volume going to the kidney is going to be reduced okay okay all those can be treated simply by giving fluids okay if we are giving fluids if we are of course except a sepsis and congenital heart disease okay okay second thing as we said is going to be increased renal vascular resistance okay as we talked before those are the two factors that renal blood flow depend on so and also we said that increase in vascular resistance is inversely proportional with renal blood flow so anything that's going to increase renal vascular resistance is going to cause decrease in the renal blood flow example is polycythemia okay increase in rpcs polycythemia is going to increase the vascular renal vascular resistance some medications example endomethacin whether the baby is taking the endomethacin and it could cause intrinsic renal damage or it's a maternal medication okay and the adrenergic drugs okay also if uh, the baby is suffering from hypoxia or asphyxia this is going to affect the renal blood flow also the kidney uh, will be ischemic which will end up causing pre-renal acute kidney injury so to sum up anything that's going to decrease renal blood flow through decreasing the blood pressure or increasing the renal vascular resistance will cause pre-renal kidney injury okay second type or second physiological cause of kidney injury is intrinsic or renal parenchymal kidney injury usually the first cause of renal kidney injury is going to be sustained pre-renal so the blood flow going to the kidney is very low for a long time the kidney is going to be skimming it will end up having kidney damage okay this is the first thing that's why we have to uh, we have to manage pre-renal kidney failure fast and we have to diagnose this fast and it has to be taken in consideration okay second thing congenital anomalies okay whether it's hyperplasia dysplasia agenesis polycystic kidney disease usually we can get to know these congenital anomalies by ultrasound okay also uh, we can have signs of this congenital anomaly even when the baby is a fetus inside the womb as we said before we can know this from the oligohydrominus okay and that the fetus is not able to produce urine and to form a proper ammonotic fluid okay also if we're having thromboembolic disease bilateral renal vein thromboses bilateral renal arterial thromboses uh, it means that the kidney cannot get the blood or cannot give the blood again okay so the kidney is not going to function well okay you have a, a blockage okay also it can be iatrogenic we are giving a medication that our nephrotoxin so we are actually destroying the kidney by our salt the most common drug to cause nephrotoxicity is aminoglycosides aminoglycosides are widely used in the NICU in neonatal ICUs since they are very effective in treating early sepsis they are cost effective they can work very well with beta lactams so they are widely used however we have to take care while using this medication as they are well known for their nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity especially gentamicin okay um also uh, some nephrotoxic uh, materials okay such as radiographic contrast media we have to take care we have to never ever give contrast media in a dehydrated patient we have to make sure that the patient is well hydrated before giving a contrast media as it's very nephrotoxic okay uh, also if the mother is on 
captopril and domesticin, any nephrotoxic drug that might treat the fetus and cause nephrotoxicity. Okay? Those are where the reasons or the causes that might cause acute kidney injury, intrinsic kidney injury. Okay. How we are going to differentiate between those two? How we are going to differentiate between prerenal and renal? Okay. How are we going to do so? First of all, okay, if we make a simple urine analysis, we're going to check the specific gravity. As we said, pre-renal, the baby is dehydrated. So everything is going to be concentrated. We will see that the specific gravity is going to be higher than the intrinsic. Okay, this is first. Second, and the most important thing is a clinical thing. Okay, which is, if we see a baby with acute kidney injury and we still doesn't know the type of the acute kidney injury or the class, we are going to give IV fluids as a management and as well as a diagnostic tool. If the baby is responding to the fluid, this is an indication that it's a pre-renal, okay, that it's just a dehydration sink. However, if it's not responding to the fluid, so it's not a dehydration sink, no, the kidney is not working well. As well as, of course, as well as uh, the history that's going to give us an indication, the clinical sign, the other factors, uh, the baby in sepsis, uh, the baby suffering from other conditions, respiratory conditions, congenital anomalies, if uh, we're having cardiac conditions, all those are going to contribute, okay, as we said. When we are evaluating something in unit, we're going to take everything. We're going to check the history. We're going to check the clinical examination as well as labs, as well as uh, as well as labs and ultrasound, X-rays. Okay, obstructive. Obstructive means that there is something that is obstructing the urine to get out. However, the kidney did its function well. Okay. Usually, it's due to urethral obstruction. It could be due to urethral obstruction. There is something obstructing the urethra, whether it's a posterior urethral valve obstruction or there is a structure or prune pelly syndrome. Okay. Or we having ba or we having urethrocele, or we having a tumors, neuro neurogenic bladder, megacystis. Okay. All those can be known easily. Okay, by ultrasound, by examination, okay? Okay. Management. Regardless the type, regardless the type or the class, the physiological class of the kidney injury, once we're having AKI, acute kidney injury, we're going to have a few steps. First, we need to rule out the cause and get to know whether it's renal or pre-renal. Secondly, how we are going to do that? We are going to evaluate the history. We are going to insert the catheter in order to know the input and the output and be able to know if it's a total renal failure. We are going to calculate essential water loss and upon that we're going to make fluid restriction and give only that, okay? We have to Check the sign and symptoms. We have to check if there is edema, and we have to check if this edema is responsive or not. Okay, so we are, are we hypovolemic or hypervolemic? Okay, we have to make fluid challenge tests. We have to uh, think about giving furosemide if the baby is overloaded, and we're going to talk about that. We're going also to talk about the rule of dopamine okay this is only a sum up to give you an idea of what we're going to do when we see a K aki we're going to get each and every single point that i have said and we're going to discuss it okay let's start first of all we are going to evaluate the under to determine the underlying etiology and rising creatinine okay so we are going to evaluate the history if we 
check the history and we found oligohydromnus this gives us an indication it's not something pre-renal no the baby or actually the fetus were not able sorry to produce urine okay this means that we're having uh, something with, that we're having something from the fetus okay maybe the maybe the mother were taking an aflatoxic drug and the kidney is intrinsic okay kidney injury okay or maybe there is something obstructing it okay uh, as we said like uh, uh, urethral obstruction for example so we have to check an ultrasound we have to make an ultrasound to check we have to rule out everything okay prenatal if we are having if suffering from prenatal asphyxia okay as we talked before, this is going to cause ischemia to the kidney, causing pre-renal damage. Leading disorder, dehydration, pre-renal damage, okay? Polycythemia. Polycythemia is going to increase the renal vascular resistance, which will end up causing decrease in, pre, in the uh, renal blood flow, which will cause pre-renal kidney injury, okay? So... As we see, the history is very important. It's going to give us an indication where we're going and the class of kidney injury, okay? Okay, uh, <clears throat> thrombocytosis, thrombocytopenia, sepsis, if there is a third space loss, if, there, if we're having a thromboembolic event going on, okay? We have to check our... We need to check the renal veins or not, okay? Maternal drug use okay whether the mother were using a drug that is nephrotoxic and called intrastic kidney injury all the and also we have to evaluate the medication the baby is taking as we might be giving uh, the term infant or the of the infant a drug that is causing renal toxicity and it is the reason for the aki that we're suffering from right now okay so the history is very very important it will give us an indication whether we are in pre-renal or intrinsic or post-renal it will give us an indication that we are expecting even the aki to acquire before it acquires okay second thing we have to place as we said catheter i have to place a urinary catheter we have to know the input and the output it is very important it's going to give us an indication whether the baby is dehydrated or uh, the baby is not uh, or we're giving the baby enough fluid however the baby still is not producing this urine we have to restrict fluid so caster and knowing the input and the output is very very important however make sure during inserting the catheter that we are not causing infections okay we have to make sure that we are avoiding infections okay third thing we have to evaluate the sign and symptoms of intravascular depletion again with the dehydration thing is the baby is dehydrated or not we're going to check the sign and symptoms of dehydration okay what are the signs and symptoms of dehydration tachycardia sunken fentanyl pores can trigger dry mucosal membrane okay of course we're going to use uh, labs in order to evaluate renal function we're going to uh, check the bone we're going to check serum creatinine we're going to check the electrolytes if you think uh, of any other lab that you think that we need to do perform the lab okay if edema present we have to evaluate intravascular volume whether the intravascular volume is depleted or not okay if the baby is edematous okay if we're talking about a hypoalbuminemia case so in hypoalbuminemia the baby might be edematous due to the lack of albumin however the baby is suffering from intravascular volume depletion so if you're seeing an edema it doesn't mean that the baby is overloaded it might be the total opposite and the baby is suffering from depletion okay so we have to make sure we have to make sure that the baby is not depleted before 
thinking of treating the edema okay so for for example when we're talking about the labs yes we're going to to it we're going to check the serum creatinine electrolyte in this case we're going to check also the albumin okay and treatment in this case is very simple we are going to give albumin okay okay fluid a fluid challenge test as we said if we, we need to differentiate between pre renal and remove kidney injury we're going to perform fluid challenge test okay what is fluid challenge test and what is and what is the importance of fluid challenge test fluid challenge test is very simple what we're going to do is we're going to give the baby 10 ml per kg normal saline IV and we're going to wait and monitor the response okay if the baby is responding to this fluid challenge if the baby is responding to the saline this usually indicates that this baby is dehydrated that this baby is suffering from pre-renal kidney injury and actually it will work as a diagnostic tool as well as a management tool we are treating the baby we are giving him what he needs okay if the baby is not responding to the fluids we can repeat it once more if not responding again usually this indicates that we're having a renal injury okay of course before inserting the normal saline we have to check the cardiac failure it's very important as we all know cardiac failure needs fluid restriction so we have to check the cardiac function before giving the normal saline okay okay of course last thing to be done is renal ultrasound in order to check that there is not any congenital anomalies or obstruction that's causing this AKI okay um okay let's talk about two things furosemide furosemide some people uh, think that if the baby is edematous or overloaded uh, furosemide one dose of furosemide can help to decrease this fluid okay however we have to make sure that the baby the intravascular volume is not depleted it could be third space volume the baby could be edematous due to third space volume it acquired in sepsis okay or hypoalbuminemia so before giving uh, lavix make sure that the intravascular volume is not depleted okay also check potassium and sodium as we all know furosemide can cause electrolyte disturbance okay usually if we're having pre-renal AKI that is not responding to the normal saline we can give small dose of dopamine to decrease to prevent the AKI okay we might if the pre-renal AKI due to um, hypotension resistant hypotension not responding to fluid we can use dopamine in order to increase this the blood pressure sorry okay in order to increase blood pressure so this is how to manage AKI so mainly you have to know the etiology and the cause of AKI and solve it in order to solve the AKI you have to differentiate whether it's an obstructive thing or it's an kidney barrinkel damage or it's a pre-renal damage okay as we said study the etiology study well the history check out and rule out the, the uh, all the etiology that might cause this, this AKI check the medication if the baby is taking any nephrotoxic drug stop this drug if it's possible check the blood pressure check the intravascular volume 
uh, check may uh, make an ultrasound to check that there is no congenital anomalies okay I check the cardiac function gave fluid challenge test okay those are how can we treat aki in units okay the problem with aki usually is not only the fact that the kidney is not functioning well however the problem is with a lot of complications that acquire with AKR. For example, usually hyperkalemia acquire hyperkalemia usually hyperkalemia acquire with AKI. Okay. If hyperkalemia acquired, we are going to stop all potassium containing fluids and drugs causing hyperkalemia. Example for drug that causing hyperkalemia is inhibitor and domesticin. We're going to stop all those medication. If the potassium is more than 6.5, you have to make an ECG to check if there is any abnormalities. If there is a sign and symptom of hyperkalemia or ECG changes, give calcium gluconate IV. You can also give glucose and insulin in order to shift the cell inside uh, sorry in order to shift potassium inside the cell you can give sodium bicarb for the same reason to shift potassium inside the cell okay we are going to discuss uh, we are going to discuss the hyperkalemia and how to treat hyperkalemia in fluid and electrolyte management chapter okay we are just giving you a brief a brief information about it since it's very important when we're treating the AKI to check for the complication to check if there is any problem with the potassium level and treat it okay uh, second thing fluid management as we said if the baby is suffering from renal failure this absolute renal failure there is no urine output the baby is anuric we have to restrict the fluid and give in and give only water sensible loss okay if the baby is hydrated you have to increase the fluid so fluid management is very important in units okay uh, how to make a proper cocktail and how to and how how to use this fluid and how to calculate this fluid you can use neonatal fluid app calculator you can find it in google play store it's very simple it's very easy and it's going to calculate all the fluid and electrolyte replacement in seconds you can use it it's free it's for free and you can find it in google play store okay sodium as we said usually patients with aki will suffer from hyponatremia it's a dilutional hypodatremia secondly to the water retention so usually only restriction of fluid will treat this hyponatremia as it's only dilutional hyponatremia however we have to measure sodium level every 12 hours if sodium level at any time is less than 120 or symptoms like seizures acquired we have to replace this uh, we have to replace sodium as we said go to google play store download neonatal fluid app calculator you are going to just input the sodium level that you are the desired sodium level and the sodium level of the baby and cal calculate it will calculate it for you okay as we said it's for free you can use it <coughs> phosphorus Patient with AKI should be restricted. Should um, phosphorus is restricted in AKI patients, so we have to restrict using phosphorus in this patient. If you're giving any medication with phosphorus, as long as you can stop it, stop it. Okay. Check if the baby is taking milk. Check whether phosphorus is inside the milk and is inside the formula and change it. Okay. Calcium. Usually, patients suffering from AKI will suffer from hypocalcemia. If symptomatic, give calcium gluconate IV at dose 0.5 to 1 mL per kg. 
okay as we said before all the electrolyte disturbance will be discussed again in electrolyte fluid and electrolyte management chapter and it's going to discuss completely now we're just taking a brief information about each one of them okay nutrition sorry metabolic acidosis usually a patient with aki will suffer from uh, metabolic acidosis usually it's mild it will be corrected once we correct the blood pressure once we correct the fluid and electrolyte however if it persists or if blood uh, or sorry ph less than 7.2 and the bicarbonate is less than 18 give sodium bicarb we're going to talk about it later we're going to discuss how to treat metabolic acidosis fully later okay okay nutrition it's very important to take care of the nutrition okay usually we are restricting fluid which will make it very different sorry which we are which will make it very difficult to give a proper nutrition to the baby so we, yes we are restricting the fluid but take care of their nutrition okay they need a proper nutrition to be able to fight okay um, if restricting fluid will make it very difficult and we cannot make a proper nutrition and will affect the nutrition of the baby then dialysis is required okay and we're going to talk about this okay few seconds later we're going to discuss this okay so nutrition is very important hypertension usually when we are going to restrict the fluid hypertension is going to be resolved however if it persists we can use antihypertensive drugs okay dialysis when when dialysis is indicated okay if failure in correcting severe fluid overload okay we're having an infant overloaded and we tried everything to correct this overload and it failed then dialysis is required okay if we are having hyperkalemia uncontrolled hyperkalemia and we failed to decrease the potassium level metabolic acidosis okay of course severe metabolic acidosis that we failed to correct and uremia okay also as we said if we're having a problem in creating adequate nutrition due to severe fluid restriction this is a very important point that usually we miss okay we take care of hyperkalemia we take care of acidosis we take care of overload because it's it's a sign and symptom that you're seeing and it's very important it's life-threatening usually we miss the nutrition part if we are making if we are restricting the fluid to the extent that we cannot provide adequate nutrition to the baby it's a call for dialysis okay okay And this was how to treat AKI. So usually the problem in treating AKI is not in treating AKI itself, it's in treating the complication. So you have to know whether it's a pre-renal or obstructive or renal, you have to know the cause. By treating the cause, you're saving the kidney, but don't forget to treat the complication don't forget to check all the possible complication and if any are present please treat it okay okay we're going now to talk about how to calculate creatinine clearance it's very important to be able to calculate creatinine clearance as is going to be used in order to be able to modify the dose to uh, according to the new case that we're having okay so usually a baby in a neonatal ICU is taking a lot of medication lots of them need renal dose adjustment in order to be able to adjust these doses we need creatinine clearance okay 
So we have to understand how to calculate creatinine clearance in unit. It's very simple. We're going to use the first equation. Okay, creatinine clearance equal K, which is constant. Okay, multiplied by the length of the baby in centimeters divided plasma creatinine. Okay, so. We are not going to use this equation. We're not going to calculate creatinine clearance unless the baby is already suffering, unless we determine that the baby is suffering from AKI. Okay, you cannot say that the baby is suffering from AKI just because you're having a high serum creat. If we evaluate, as we discussed before, all the factors and we stated that the baby is suffering from AKI then you can then calculate the creatinine clearance and upon this you can adjust all the medication according to each medication of course okay um, also to make it very easy for you there is a neonatal drug renal dose adjustment you can find it also in Google Play Store it's a very simple app. It's free app. Sorry, I think it's paid app. Okay, sorry. Okay, neonatal drug renal dose adjustment app. It's a paid app. Once paid app, okay. However, you will get into whatever medication you want. You will this equation. You, you don't have to memorize it. You just write the theorem creatinine of the baby and the length. Calculate it will calculate for you the creatinine clearance and it's going to tell you the proper dose of the the medication. Okay, it has all uh, the uh, it has all the renal dose adjustment. Okay, for the medication. Okay, it's very simple. It's very easy. I like it so much. You can use it. It will make it easier for you to calculate creatinine clearance and it will help you to know the modified dose. You don't have to look up for it okay 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 uh, thank you so much this was uh, our lecture um, now we are going to discuss a case I hope that you're going to like it's going to sum up everything that we said and let's see in practice how to manage an AKI patient okay we are going to read the case together we're going to think there are some questions we are going to think about and we're going to discuss it okay okay we're having one day old girl born at 26 weeks gestation via spontaneous vaginal dripping two days following premature rupture of membrane okay so we're having a prematurity we're having a rupture of membrane. Those are two risk factors. Her birth weight was 750 gram and her Apgar score were 5 and 6. 5 and 6. As we talked before about the Apgar score, 5 and 6 they are very low. So the, actually this means that this baby was hypoxic. Okay. At 1 and 5 minutes of life. She was intubated and given surfactant after a blood specimen was, drove, was drawn from culture. For culture, sorry. She was started an ambicillin and gentamicin. She's taking an nephrotoxic drug, okay? And given maintenance IV fluids. She fails to pass urine in the first 24 hours after birth and her, and her blood pressure are persistently low at 30, 20 millimeter mercury. Okay. Let's see the questions. When should newborn pass the first urine after birth? Newborn usually... 100% of newborn produce urine in the first 24 hours of birth. Nearly half of them void at 8 hours after birth. So, not voiding urine in the first 24 hours of birth is not normal and need to be evaluated. So, actually, we were saying that this girl has a lot of risk factors and not passing urine. This means that there is a problem. We need to recheck whether this baby is suffering from AKI or not. Okay. Okay. Second question. 
What should you do first to evaluate and treat this infant? Let's evaluate the history, okay? And evaluate, let's evaluate the history, okay? This baby required resuscitation at birth. As we said, Abgar's school, five, five and six, and she needed to be intubated. So this means that this baby required resuscitation at birth. Also, when we see the examination, this baby has persistent hypotension. Those two could serve as a pre-renal etiology. Okay, we're talking about ischemia of the kidney due to the hypoxia that acquired at birth and low blood flow going to the kidney due to the hypotension. Okay, so we are going to manage AKI. How we are going to manage AKI? It's a prenatal. Give normal saline with dose 10 ml per kg. And as we said, the dose may be repeated if there is no significant improvement. Insert catheter in order to be able to calculate input and output, okay? If the blood pressure persists, start dopamine, okay? And this is how we're going to evaluate and treat the infant, okay? Okay, the third question, is she at risk for gentamicin toxicity? Of course, she's at risk of gentamicin toxicity. First of all, this baby is very preterm. The kidney is not well developed. The ability of the kidney to excrete the gentamicin is not well developed. As we all know, amyloid glycosides, especially gentamicin, are very toxic. Are very toxic, sorry. The toxicity increased with reduced renal mass, with intravascular volume depletion. This baby is preterm, so she ha she's suffering from reduced renal mass. Uh, the, uh, the, she, this baby is suffering from hypotension, so the intravascular volume depletion is available. So the toxicity of gentamicin actually might increase due to this. Okay, of course, if they used um, any nephrotoxic drug with gentamicin or if the duration increased and the dose is high, all those will contribute to increase gentamicin toxicity. Okay? Okay. Let's continue with the same case. We, as we said, we have withdrawn a blood culture. The blood culture was negative at 48 hours and antibiotic were discontinued. By 72 hours of life, her urine output increased to 1 ml per kg per hour and serum creatinine value was 1.5 mg per ml. So the urine output actually increased, however, the serum creatinine rise. Okay, she remained on a ventilator and had pounding pulse, an active bricardium and loud continuous murmur. Uh, an echo shows 3 mm BDA with left to right chant and retrograde diastolic aortic flow. The cure term is considering using NSAID to close ductus arteriosus. Okay, can large BDA affect renal perfusion? Okay, usually the problem with, sorry, usually the problem with this baby is not BDA. The problem with this baby is retrograde diastolic aortic flow. Okay, this is the main problem. The problem is that the BDA is left to right chunk, that there is a reversal of the diastolic blood flow from the descending aorta, which will result in compromised blood flow to organs distal to descending aorta, such as kidney. Low renal perfusion limits the secretion of metabolic product generated in underperfused organs which contributes to a systemic metabolic acidosis. So it actually can it affect, yes, especially if there is a descending, or if there is a reversal of diastolic blood flow from the descending award. Okay, second question, which insight have the least effect on renal function when it is used to, for BDA closure? Okay, usually 
insects used for BD closure are with endomethacin or ibuprofen. Both are insects. Any insects can cause renal damage, okay, especially in units, especially in preterm units, okay. However, if we are selecting between endomethacin and profen, profen has better safety profile than endomethacin, so if I'm going to select uh, an insight to close this PDA, I'm going to select profen, not endomethacin. Okay, back to the same baby. At the result of her hemodynamically significant PDA, she received two doses of profen. Her urine output decreased to 0.3 milli per kg per hour. Her serum creatinine increased again to 1.8 milligram per deciliter in the next 24 hours and continued to increase to 2.2 milligram per deciliter in the 72 hours after profen was given. She appears puffy but does not require higher ventilator support. Echo shows closure of PDA. Does this baby suffering from AKI of course this baby is suffering from AKI okay usually to uh, I actually answered the question quickly but sorry I actually answered the question quickly uh, but if we are talking about serum creatinine alone we're going to discuss each one okay so serum creatinine alone does not increase until renal function is reduced by 25 to 50 percent however serum creatinine in very preterm baby normally increase in the first few days after birth before declining and reaching steady state okay so as I said, this baby was 26 weeks of gestation. It's very preterm. The increase in the first few days of serum creatinine alone is not an indicator. Okay. However, we have other factors. Okay. Usually, unital AKR result in polyuric renal failure. Urine output more than one milli per kg per hour, making urine output alone unreliable measurement for renal function. Okay, however, we're having two factors. Okay, the fact that the urine output decreased from 1 milli to 0.3 milli, while serum creatinine increased to 2.2 milligram per deciliter, make the diagnosis of AKI acceptable. Okay, so if we're having serum creatinine rise alone in a very preterm baby. We cannot say it's an AKI. Actually, it can acquire. However, the presence of this rising serum creatinine with the decline in urine output can be a very good indication that this kid is suffering from AKI. Okay? We repeated the lab test. Sodium was 132. Potassium 5.9, chloride 102, okay, bond 30, creatinine 1.2, okay. What is the next step for the management of this infant electrolyte? Calcium chloride, calcium chloride is the normal level, no need to adjust the calcium chloride. Okay. Um that's it. Okay. We are going to check another case. 
1000 gram growth restricted female infant is born following 32 weeks of gestation they have continuous vaginal delivery the mother received two doses of betamethasone and toxolytics with endomethacin so the antenatal steroid could be administered the delivery was complicated by maternal fever and chorioamnitis the infant is now one day old and being managed with CPAP in a humidified isolate the total parental nutrition containing 2.5 gram per kg amino acid is administered at 120 mainly per kg per day and traffic internal feeding are initiated she is receiving ampicillin and gentamicin out of concern of early neonatal sepsis on the day of birth the infant serum creatinine was 1 at 24 hours of age the clear the chemistry panel sodium was 139, potassium 4.4, bound 22, creatinine 1.1. The infant is making 1 milligram per kg per hour of urine. Questions? Does this infant has impaired kidney function? Do you think this infant has an impaired kidney function? No. As I can see. No. Okay. We're having a proper pun. We're having a proper urine output. We're having a proper serum creatinine. So we're having normal potassium, we're having normal sodium level after 24 hours. So it's actually no, this baby is not suffering from impaired kidney function. What are the risk factors of neonatal kidney function? We have a lot of risk factors. Let's go back to the case. Okay, check. Preter is a risk factor. Okay. The fact that the mother took uh, toxic drugs, maternal toxic drugs, okay, nephrotoxic drugs, example, toxolytics and endomethacin, okay, okay, it's an important factor. Okay, the fact that the, the fact that the baby is taking gentamicin, the baby is taking a nephrotoxic drug, all those are factors contributing with nephrotoxicity. What would you expect to happen to theorem creatine over the next few days to weeks? This baby is not a preterm. Is not a preterm, a very preterm. So we're not expecting the theorem creatine to rise. However, the baby could suffer at any moment from AKI. The baby is taking nephrotoxic drugs. The mother took nephrotoxic drug. The baby is a preterm. Um, at any time, the baby is susceptible to get AKI. Okay, so we are expecting that the same creatinine will might increase and urine output might decrease. Okay, what other markers are available to assess kidney function and kidney injury? We have to check the blood pressure to check whether the mother, uh, sorry, to check whether there is uh, any prerenal uh, AKI or not. We have to check if there is an edema or not. We have to check the urine output. We have to make an... Okay. Okay. Thank you so much.